Hey folks, welcome to Spooky Appalachia. I uh, hope y'all are doing good tonight. Um, so today I've got a special guest, Alicia Lines from Grafton, West Virginia. She has started a Grafton Monster Museum and a Grafton Monster Festival. And tonight she's here to tell us about that, both of those, and the story of the Grafton Monster. Welcome, Alicia. Thank you very much for having me. Well, thank you so much for coming on. I'm exci I'm real excited about this and the festival and the the museum. Well, I think people are going to love it. <laughs> We've had a great response so far. Yeah, I've seen. I've I've heard a lot about it. And uh yeah, we can't wait to come up there. And We're Cindy really keeps telling me all about it. And oh yeah, Cindy I Harper. Got to meet her, and we were all we're just so excited. Yeah, <laughs> it was a little crazy. <laughs> well, do you want to start us off by telling us the story of the Grafton monster? Sure thing. Um, there was a young reporter with the Grafton Sentinel. Um, his name was Robert Cockrell. Um, he was coming home, I believe, um, one evening, which happened to be June 16th um, in 1964. Mm -hmm. um, it was nighttime. I think it was close to 11 or so. Um, at the time, the, the road was named Riverside Drive. Uh, they've since renamed it. Um, but it was down by the Taggart River. So he saw... What he, I, I'm not sure if he even knew what he saw, but it was very large. Um, I think between seven to nine feet tall. Um, its skin was white and kind of seal like. Yeah, that's um, what I heard too. Yeah, so it was a little strange and not really near anything, any kind of animal or what have you that might be roaming around um, by the river at night. Um, so he was, I think he actually had a couple of his buddies come back with him to look for it. And, of course, they didn't find it. Um, and he wanted to write a, an article about it at the newspaper because he was a reporter. But apparently that didn't go very well. Um, so a couple of days later, uh, they had uh, posted a an article that kind of dismissed uh, what he had seen and that it was just some kind of uh, monster hunting craze that was triggered by some uh, sightings, I think somewhere else that had happened uh, not too long before that. Um, so his story really got dismissed. Um, but we do have the articles that mentioned it uh, from the Grafton Sentinel. So it kind of memorialized it that way. Mm -hmm. So um, there's something there, <laughs> but uh, um, an additional story that um, I had located um, from the Monsters of West Virginia book that I have here um, was in the Raleigh Register. It was in near Beckley, West Virginia. It was a lady from Skelton had seen um, what she described as a shiny thing that um, resembled a wash tub, and of course it was white as well. Um, she kind of equated it to the, the Flatwoods monster, so not really sure, but it's a possibility from the description, because um, that doesn't really describe the Flatwoods monster. So <laughs> it very well Yeah, it was kind of Christmas monster, colored. So. Yeah, that does not describe, in my opinion anyway, Yeah, uh, describe that at all, but... Uh, so we got some uh, potential leads for some other corroborating stories, but uh, that's basically the gist of it. We we don't have any um, documentation of any other sightings, but there might be some out there. Um, so we will continue to to research that um, and update it as you know as we find it. We we do have a Facebook page for the museum, so I like to share anything I find there. Um, and of course, we'll add it to the museum as we locate it. But mm -hmm. 
but if anybody else has anything out there <laughs> yeah we'd see. love i would love to have it <laughs> i'm sure you home. would too <laughs> <laughs> yeah and if anybody has any old copies of these actual newspapers i'll take those too <laughs> yeah that would be great for the museum which uh you've started it's it opens it should open the week during the festival yeah the the 15th is that saturday and i believe the opening time is 10 a.m so we'll have like a little grand opening ceremony and um we will probably have some cake that's shaped like a grafted monster that'd <laughs> be so yeah, cool <laughs> we've got somebody uh, going to, uh, who has created their own grafted monster cosplay costume so uh, and they'll be there so um it should be a fun time and get to check out the the initial uh, setup of the museum and we'll be there too exactly uh, me and my friend donald <laughs> yeah i can't wait yeah we're really excited a lot we don't have a a huge amount of locals uh, uh excited about it but we do have a good core group that uh has been looking uh to to take advantage of this uh legend and uh and get to enjoy it as a community so you know i, re I remember thinking for a long time i was like you know i wish grafton had something grafton monster related for me to come up there and see mm -hmm. I, yeah. I i think i thought that for years oh yeah we've we've had several people think about doing it and it just hadn't really i guess maybe the timing was bad or mm -hmm. they just didn't uh, so i think a lot of people have been thinking about it for a long time um and then uh i was talking with one of my friends uh, about it and we should do a festival because like everybody else is having festivals yeah yeah <laughs> we should have a festival too and then that kind even of the grass man i yeah. don't know i mean not the grass man <clears throat> veggie man got a festival yeah. i was like all right veggie man's getting one today. yeah 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 uh, we're excited about that but um uh, yeah we we in that process of realizing hey it's been 60 years since this oh yes this is the 60th yeah. anniversary we thought that was the perfect time to you know start yeah <laughs> definitely so i was like that's a big deal yeah let's do it and so the, the core group of us uh, have been working on organizing that and um but uh yeah it's been a it's been a trip <laughs> but uh, we have had some insight from some of the other museums and oh, they, they had mentioned that probably one out of three people ask is there somewhere in grafton to to visit the grafton monster or you know kind of see what that story is and visit there but we didn't have anything <laughs> so, yeah yeah so we were missing out on that but, but, soon. but i guess yeah i guess i'm not the only one that has ever wondered right. that huh? <laughs> yep apparently at the, the flatwoods monster museum they had a lot of inquiries about about where they could go and graft them and they didn't really have anywhere to send them yeah so, yeah that makes sense well i think that's awesome that y'all are starting that and the mm -hmm. festival and i can't wait to see them um oh, yeah. so you you said that, that you guys kind of thought of to do the festival but uh what mm -hmm. what made you think to do the uh muse museum was it just uh the people asking about it i think it was that and um i had kind of been thinking about doing something with the grafton monster for a while um and I've kind of been gathering information and, you know, kind of doing my research, um, visiting other conventions and other museums. And I was thinking, you know, we should have a museum for this too. If people are wanting to come here to see something, we need to have something for them to come see. <laughs> so, um, I just, and like every time we're either passing Sutton or going <laughs> through Sutton or, um, I'm like, you know, they can have two, two really cool museums to come visit at a time, and we could certainly have one. Yeah, <laughs> like, definitely. Kind of I, I saw that opportunity there. I was like, and at the same time, I was working on 
opening my um, own bookstore here. And so I've got this huge building that I was like, you know, I think I could fit that in there. <laughs> so, uh, it it kind of falls under my uh, uh, curiosities part of my store where it's just basically weird things that I like. Um, I'll, <laughs> I'll be selling in addition to books. And so the, the cryptid theme things kind of fall under that. And uh, I enjoy you know, reading about them and researching them and finding stuff with my favorite cryptids on it and shopping and, you know, that sort of thing. So um, I thought that kind of fit perfectly into what I was already doing. Um, so it kind of seemed like a an easy transition there. To yeah. Do. Oh, that's awesome. I cannot wait to see it. I can't wait for the festival. Father's Day weekend. Yep. I think it's going to be real. Uh, there's a lot of people going. Oh, yeah. But I, I haven't checked it in a, <laughs> in a week or so. Just, uh. Uh, but it was like up to 2,200, I think. Oh, wow. Uh, following, following the event. <laughs> so, wow. Um, so uh, I, if that many people show up, I don't know what we're going to do. <laughs> <laughs> We will happily uh, roll with the punches there. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, they're as calm as they are at the Mothman Festival. I don't. Right. I mean, I'm. It sounds like you've probably been. Everybody I know has been, but uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm always shocked at how calm everybody is and cool, and nobody starts yeah. trouble. And yeah, we 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 try to. Um, uh, allay the fears of uh, any uh, government officials <laughs> that this, if we do get more than like the 500 that we're anticipating, um, it shouldn't be a problem. Uh, the, it definitely has not been my experience at the other conventions to, for rowdiness or, you know, anything like that. But, um, we're all there because we love the, the information and the themes and the lore and, you know, it just, we're not there to go struggle. <laughs> so that's always reassuring. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I'm definitely looking forward to it. I know a lot of people are. And I'm that. sure they appreciate all that you're doing. Yeah, I've, I've been really lucky. I've had a lot of people step up and contribute things. Um, just so, you know, they want to be a part of it and... I appreciate all the help that I've had because, I mean, we've had our logo donated and uh, we've had um, other supplies donated and even like our our um, local governments are kind of helping us with some stuff um, that we couldn't really financially <laughs> afford the first year. <laughs> so we're all kind of coming to together as a community and that that's really nice to see. And I think it'll. I, we do plan on continuing this uh, festival, so hopefully it'll get bigger and better. Yeah, hopefully yeah. my videos will help uh, oh, yes. get we some word out that, about please. it. I'll keep sharing it out and telling people to check it out. Yeah, maybe maybe it'll get huge. It, we, we have heard that uh, the festival has been discussed on... Um, like YouTube videos and things like you guys do as well oh, yeah. as podcasts and like even a podcast in Canada was talking about it and we're like, Oh, oh. really? <laughs> now I've so, seen some people talking about it on Twitter. Yeah. I, I will say that I've I saw that and I was kind of surprised. Yeah. It's, it's kind of amazing. Like we've really only been working on this for like two months and it's, Oh, wow. Yeah. Like I think the beginning of February, maybe. Yeah, and it's about the time I heard about it. We've already got about 40 or 45 uh, vendors, um, I guess, committed. Uh, so we're still looking for vendors if anybody's interested. But um, Oh, do you want to really mention any? Um, I saw some uh, special guests posted. Oh, yes. You've got yeah, a couple. We got some good speakers coming. Um, some are pretty local, too, which is nice. Yeah, Cindy Harper is one of them. Yep. 
I was like, that's where you were. <laughs> I was yeah. like, I'm going to uh, But uh, yeah, Cindy Harper's uh, lives in Grafton. She's going to speak uh, kind of during the closing ceremonies of the of the festival on Sunday. Um, and we're, we also have uh, Robert Cockrell's daughter coming right before that. Um, and she will be interviewed by uh, a podcast called main corpse um they are local as well huh. um so that'll be interesting i might be involved in that too cool um, not sure <laughs> i'm trying to avoid it but, ah. uh, but uh i think you might want a couple like a little bit of a panel there but um and then on saturday the day before all that um we have uh mark muncie coming um he's famous for some books uh such as eerie florida freaky florida creepy florida um so he's coming up um les odell has been um i think he's all over the place the now Bigfoot, the bigfoot museum I think. yeah i think he has his own uh show west virginia well i don't know if that's his show but uh he's the founder of the west virginia cryptids and strange encounters he, he's got a youtube channel similar to yeah. me mm-hmm so I think I think he had an episode about the Grafton monster. Uh, I think I shared that on our um, our Facebook page. So oh, cool. um, we also got Tony Breeden coming. Um, he is the founder of DefGen.org. Um, we got Dave Spinks coming. He's the author of Willow's Weep. Um, we also have Daniel Reed from the West Virginia Skeptic Society coming in. You want to have a challenging conversation? <laughs> 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 We're like, sure, come on. <laughs> come on. We'll, we'll, we'll hear all sides there. Um, we got uh, Matthew Shang from the uh, Moth Boys podcast coming. Yep, I saw uh, that. The, and uh, we got Kurt McCoy from Morgantown coming down. He, he wrote um, White Things, West Virginia's Weird White Monsters. Um, and then we got Adam Bonnet coming. He he uh, used to be, I think, a paranormal manager at the Trans Allegheny Lunatic Asylum, and he has a podcast as well, uh, Glider's Corner. Um, so we got a pretty good line up here. You know, uh, excited to be a part of it, and yeah. uh, probably at least half of them contacted me. So That's I, I cool. That was really cool. Um, uh, we also have a couple of the guys from. The Mountain Monsters TV show coming. I saw that too. Yeah, so uh, I think they'll be having like a, uh, a table available most of the day. I don't think they'll be speaking or anything. But Yeah, uh, I'll definitely try and find them. You can so, say we're coming too, but then they might say, who is that? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll I don't know. I don't know how famous the name Spooky Appalachia is. <laughs> I, I don't know. Well, eventually, it's got a I decent thought, following. Yeah, I, I thought they were interesting. The videos I've watched. So. Oh, thank you. <laughs> but, but I, I do like to um, learn more about the local legends mm -hmm. and things. Like, oh, I never heard about that. Or yeah, that yeah, yeah. That's the cool thing. That's that's what I decided. That's why I decided to start it. Mm -hmm. And then everybody also has their own story, and mm -hmm. it's fun sharing those out with uh, that people send in and going and visiting these places around the region and video on them. So oh, I yeah. mean, I have a blast doing it. It it really reminds me of uh, places uh, like where I grew up, and mm -hmm. um, and it, it's like I wonder if that creepy place I knew about <laughs> a story or you know. <laughs> Everything but, uh, seems to you never know, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's it's fun. Uh, I think we've got a lot of uh, authors and artists and um, podcasts and uh, paranormal investigators and all like a whole wide range of uh, yeah, definitely people coming. So I think it'll be fun. Well, I can't wait. Well, um, for anybody tuning in, uh, you might be able to catch us there walking around or filming and um big thanks to alicia for coming on well, we really appreciate it and uh y'all have a good one and uh we'll catch you in the next one